Hello everyone, I'm Alan from Technology Moments. We wanted to share with you the experience that we had with this great access point from TP-Link and its Omata series of high-performance networking hardware. Very well packaged, a little overpackaged for our taste. It includes just the access point and the mounting bracket with accessories. Important to note that you will not receive a power adapter. This has two main reasons. The first one is that it is a business class access point and it is a very typical scenario to have these connected directly to power over ethernet switches. However, what is also important to note is that this power over ethernet switch needs to be a PoE++ switch with a 10 gigabit per second port, which makes it a pretty expensive option. The second reason that all of you may already know, and maybe the most important one, is that for bigger deployments, power over ethernet eliminates expensive electric circuitry needed to power this device and you will just be using your UTP wiring. Ok, so on the other hand, it'll let you connect to a 12 volt adapter, which is exactly what we did, preferably a 12 volt 3 amp adapter, that by the way will make it consume less power overall at its highest performance. Uh, we then connected it to an aggregation switch from Unify, fantastic switch by the way, with a 10 gigabit per second over copper port. All this using a Netgear power adapter as this switch will not provide 802.3bt power over Ethernet, what is commonly known as PoE++. Our test let us prove that this access point performed as expected. It has a very good capacity of 128 clients per radio. However, for example, if your clients were to connect all of them at the same time at the 6 GHz band, of course you will have a limitation of 128 clients. It is the first time that out of the box a Wi-Fi device lets us connect, uh, of course using a Wi-Fi 7B E200 client, beyond the 1 gigabit per second limit. This makes it a fantastic option for many avoiding wired connections and of course, for today's ISPs, offering more than 1 gigabit per second internet access. For those of you who were wondering, that is one of the main reasons why it needs a 10 gigabit per second port, however I think that a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port would have sufficed. This as when you have concurrent connections they tend to divide the speeds among the clients. Another question that many may have is, does it work with a 1 gigabit per second power over ethernet plus switch? Yes it does and we were able to prove it. However, you will have the performance limited to the 1 gigabit per second networking axis of the 6 gigahertz band, still pretty good. As for range, this access point performed fantastic in Wi-Fi 4 and Wi-Fi 5. However, as we all know, Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7 have not been designed for outstanding range. And this also depends of course in the power of transmission, not only the access point, but also the client's networking adapter. By the way, we are still looking for a very good Wi-Fi client adapter, as all of them performed very well when connected to Wi-Fi 7 access points, but not so good when connected to Wi-Fi 4 or Wi-Fi 5. On the other hand, the access point itself handled very well all Wi-Fi version connections to it. Ok guys, thanks for watching, please remember that the whole purpose of this video is to share our experience with you, so if you're in the decision making process of buying a great access point, you make an informed decision. We hope it was as informative as it was intended. See you next time.